So we need a brief uh, review of directional terms that are used to refer to different um, regions of the nervous system. When we're talking about um, kind of gross neuroanatomy, like large scale structures in the brain uh, and the spinal cord, um, we could be talking about um, sort of widespread anatomical, you know, uh, relationships in terms of space, right, in terms of where one thing is located uh, in relation to another. But we can also be talking about what we call regional neuroanatomy, like um, sort of smaller regions within the brain, for example, um, but the sort of spatial relations between different components of that smaller region. Um, these directional terms that we're going to be introducing here actually are utilized both in this sort of large-scale sense, uh, but also in this regional sense. Um, there's a particular uh, structure in the, the middle of the brain, right, the medial portion of the brain, just on top of the brain stem called the thalamus, uh, where most, where many of the nuclei, you know, the clusters, the clumps of gray matter uh, that do uh, information processing, are actually named almost entirely by some of these um, directional terms like the ventro-posterior lateral nucleus and, you know, uh, you know, the lateral geniculate nucleus, the medial geniculate nucleus, etc. Those are actually, um, you know, directional terms that are being used in reference to each other in a regional or localized uh, part of the anatomy. So um, what are these terms? Well, they include, for example, um, the, uh, the rostrum, right, or the rostral end of the cerebrum, right? The rostral end is the sort of front end over here. Um, and rostrum actually refers to like uh, the prow of a ship. It's also like uh, a raised dais or like, um, you know, uh, kind of site where somebody would give a speech, for example. Um, so this is the very front portion of your cerebrum. Um, and then you can go all the way back to the, the, uh, the, uh, the caudal, which means tail end basically, of the cerebrum. This is back here. So the rostral end of our cerebrum is going to be our frontal lobes, right? The caudal end of our cerebrum is going to be our uh, uh, occipital lobes back here. Um, and then the back, basically, of the cerebrum is utilizes the, the, the Latin for the back, right, which is dorsal. And then we have the ventral is the lower portion over here. Um, so there are other terms that are used um, to basically refer to different directions around the cerebrum. Um, for example, uh, the rostral end is also referred to as the anterior end. The uh, caudal end here is referred to as the posterior. The dorsal is actually called the superior, and the ventral is known as the inferior. Now these terms, anterior, posterior, uh, superior, inferior, really derive more from a neuro neurology tradition, um, you know, from uh, surgeons or neurologists who were like referring to different structures, you know, within the cerebrum utilizing these terms. And the the issue about these these particular terms, the, the, the anterior, posterior, uh, superior, inferior, is that they apply to the entire nervous system as a whole. So the posterior portion of your spinal cord is back here, you know, the anterior portion is here, the, the inferior would be the bottom, right? And the, the superior would be the top of your you know, brainstem, for example. Um, but the other terms, the uh, uh, dorsal, you know, ventral, uh, rostral, and caudal, uh, they actually, um, um, actually uh, derive more from a, a, a neuroscience research kind of um, uh, uh, tradition. And so they, they actually uh, often are ref used to refer to structures in like a, in a rodent brain, which is oriented along a single axis. So if you imagine like, you know, the, the, the head of the rodent is over here, and then its spinal cord goes right out this along the same axis. Well, we have this thing called a cephalic flexure, right? We have our, we stand up, and then we have this giant structure sort of falls over. So we have one axis that runs like this, right? And we also have an axis that runs like this. This axis cuts through your spinal cord and your brain stem. The caudal end of this axis, the caudal end of your spinal cord, for example, would be the tail end of your spinal cord, all the way at the bottom, while the rostral end would be the top portion here, you know, like the midbrain, the top portion of the brain stem would be the most rostral, you know, extent of this particular axis within our uh, nervous system. Well, when you get that flexure right at the midbrain, right, you now have an axis that goes like this, which is why the rostral end has now tilted and it's now over here 
at the frontal lobes, while the caudal end is back here, right? And then, of course, the dorsal is the back or the top here, right, of the cerebrum, and the ventral is down below. Those, those terms, you know, rostral, caudal, dorsal, ventral, are going to change depending on which axis we're referring to. So in the spinal cord, remember, dorsal, ventral, uh, rostral, caudal, right? But the anterior, posterior, superior, inferior stay the same, right? So here's anterior of the cerebrum, anterior, you know, would be the front here of my spinal cord, right? Posterior of the spinal cord, uh, posterior of the cerebrum. Does that make sense? So hopefully it does. Um, let's get to some other terms here in a moment.